Good afternoon, everybody. As always, my name is JC, and welcome to my channel, Everyman's Thoughts. We're gonna have a little fun today and play with some internet conspiracies as to why noted token scholar Tom Shippey left Amazon's The Rings of Power. The best way to do that is to bring us up to date on the history and how we got here. Amazon decides to make Rings of Power. To everyone's delight, they hire Tom Shippey, perhaps the world's most credible authority on the Tolkien Legendarium. Fast forward to July 2019. To this point, there has been a near total information blackout from the show. In fact, that silence became the centerpiece or even hallmark of the worst marketing campaign in streaming history. Then in July 2019, Tom Shippey inexplicably gives a very informative interview to a German fan site. At the time, everyone assumed this was Rings of Power doing what every other show always does and releasing some calculated information to generate some buzz. However, shortly thereafter, fans noticed the complete disappearance of Mr. Shippey from anything related to the show, and speculation began. This situation was only exacerbated by the show's now infamous level of silence and the growing mistrust for lead writers J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay. After two and a half years of uncontrolled speculation with no response, we reach February 2022 and the Vanity Fair First Look article that contains this excerpt. There was one leak in 2019 that, however innocuous, worried some of those watching from afar. The show's resident Tolkien scholar, a widely respected academic named Tom Shippey, gave an apparently unsanctioned interview to a German fan site that July, opining on what the show could and could not explore. Not long after that, Shippey was no longer involved with the series. Both he and the showrunners declined to say what exactly happened, but the obvious assumption was made by fans. It seems like the NDA is basically, if you tell anyone, we can put you through the wood chipper, says Drought the Tolkien Professor. Amazon no longer shares the names of its scholars. End quote. Although technically not an official response, I do think this explanation was generally accepted, and that's how things stood until mid-July when YouTuber George the Giant Slayer released this video. Let's play the clip. You know, I'm now beginning to believe the real reason that Tom Shippey was fired wasn't because he gave some interview to a German magazine that broke his NDA. That's, you get a slap on the wrist for that. It's because I heard from three separate sources that he would weekly tell the Bobsy twins of Payne and McKay that Prime was polluting the law. Despite George having a relatively small YouTube platform and making no actual offer of proof, the accusation that Tom Shippey was actually fired by Amazon because he called out the writers for, quote, polluting the lore has spread throughout the internet like wildfire. Now, I want to stop and say a few things here for perspective. First, I'm very familiar with this clip. Why? Because I'm a subscriber of George's and I saw this clip the day it was released. Number two, although I don't always agree with him, he usually does come forward with compelling content and I respect him for it and I would have no problem recommending his channel. As I hope you can tell, I have no ill will towards George. In fact, I respect him. But the fact remains, since there's no proven consistent track record of him knowing things others didn't know, we only have his word that he has inside sources and nothing more. Furthermore, every YouTuber you can think of has criticized Amazon for its obnoxious level of secrecy surrounding the show, even YouTubers who are generally positive towards the series. Although I have no doubt that Mr. Shippey and the writers had their run-ins, when we consider the level of secrecy that they coveted, isn't the straightforward explanation that he violated his non-disclosure agreement the more logical one? What's that old saying, the simplest explanation is usually the right one? Now here's where we have a little fun and throw a curveball. As I reflect upon this situation, I kept having to ask myself, did Tom Shippey want to be fired? Professor Shippey is obviously an educated man and has extensive experience working with the entertainment industry. Common sense tells us that he would likely have a very comprehensive understanding of his non-disclosure agreement. Yet, not only does he do the interview, but he does it with some tiny fan site that couldn't possibly offer him serious financial considerations or even raise his profile. 
with no other obvious motivations save just being a nice guy and willing to risk his job to answer questions from a relatively meaningless website, it's perfectly reasonable to then come back to, did he want to get fired? So if we're going to speculate why he did it, we have to answer why he might want to do it. Why would he want to get fired? Once again, I don't think we need to look too hard or leave the realm of common sense. You're Tom Shippey, probably the most highly regarded Tolkien scholar in the world. You love Tolkien and you've dedicated your life to it. Your name and your reputation is now being associated with the show that has completely abandoned the Root timeline, turned Galadriel into a warrior, given hobbits a significant presence in the Second Age, turning Elrond into a schmuck, having Galadriel go to Numenor, all of the identity politics, the allegories, and on and on and on. In all of these cases, Mr. Shippey would know that these writers are going almost out of their way just to betray what Tolkien would have wanted. And is that something he'd want his life's work associated with? Remember, it doesn't really matter what you or I think about the changes, whether we like them or not, agree with them or not, that is irrelevant. The only thing that does matter is what Professor Shippey thinks, particularly when viewed through the eyes of Tolkien himself. Pretty sure we know what those opinions are, especially since Tolkien addressed many of these issues directly. Now, I don't claim to have any inside sources or knowledge that anybody else doesn't have access to. But this scenario makes as much sense to me as does anything else presented, especially when you consider this tiny fan site had nothing else to offer Mr. Shippey except risk. Well, everybody, that's it for me this week. If you enjoy news and views for all your favorite fantasy entertainment, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button, and I will see you next time.